I will tell you this much. I thought last week's episode of Dynamite was probably one of the three to five best episodes of Dynamite that I've seen. I thought it was fantastic. I really, truly did. Probably some of you even watching it were stunned and thought you would entered into some type of alternative universe. Say, what type of Schlegelverse is this? He's being overwhelmingly positive about the AEW product. What the hell's going on here? Well, there's not going to be a ton of negativity about this week's show either. Because I thought this was a good, solid effort. Not quite up to the standards of last week's show, but still pretty, pretty good. Difference this week, though, is that the show kind of petered out in the second hour. It really did. Um, but even then, it's not all bad. But goddamn, I will tell you this. That opening with CM Punk and MJF and their promo face-off is everything I wanted it to be and then some. It was truly fantastic. The pot shots, MJF referencing hustle, loyalty, and respect. Like, some are probably saying, I confirmed that John Cena at AEW, the war has truly begun! <laughs> See, a puck is supposed to be straight edge, but a straight edge mean you could commit murder on the mic? Good God! He referred to MJF as a less famous Miz. Oh, you could have ended that shit right there, and that was a fatality. How do you come back from that? But it was fantastic. This is the type of shit that you bring a CM Punk in for to work with the young talent and bury the fucking young talent. I could see he learned his lesson from the man with three H's. And even the shot there talking about how the only way MJF will ever become a top guy is if Tony Khan has a daughter old enough for him to marry. Aga! Which means uh, he's learning about the Breakfast Club business! Uh, oh, man. They let this promo run long. Fantastic. Could have went another 10 minutes. Probably could have done without the CM Punk and QT Marshall match afterwards. That I will give you. But man, oh man, long promo with guys taking pot shots and burying each other. I see you, Tony Khan, using that WWE formula for your show this week. Ooh, and now some of you are going to take with your flaming keyboard fingers of fire and say, how dare you say they are using a WWE format? This is a Tony Khan special presented by Dave Meltzer. Tony Khan special presented by Brian Alvarez and Dave Meltzer. Tony Khan special. Totally not a WWE show format. Minus the fact that you had 20 minutes or so of an opening promo segment. You had multiple backstage interviews and vignettes that were randomly thrown in there at different points of time during the show. You had several other matches that didn't have a ton of consequence, one or two that really did. And then you had a main event tag match where you had a bunch of people intersecting a bunch of different storylines and they faced off for like 20 plus minutes and... Ten minutes of that was taken up by entrances. Please tell me how that's not a fucking Raw or SmackDown format. Oh, they're pissed now, Jeff. They're pissed now. How dare you, sir? How dare you, indeed. This is why I don't watch this shitty channel anymore. Because of this biased bullshit. I mean, but come on, let's be honest. A gun club versus bear country. I forgot Bear Country is even a thing. But Billy Gunn looks like a fucking beast. Like, this dude's, what, in his mid or late 50s, and he looks like that shit. And we know why that is. Because he knows he must be in peak physical condition. He knows who he wants, yet he fears the man at the same time. Oh, Sting, baby! You're goddamn right he does. He knows who he wants. I know everybody's going to talk about Darby Allen, And I'll tell you that Darby ramp spot with the one gun son was fucking well done, well executed. That looked pretty fucking stiff and sweet. But we all know that Billy Gunn wants Sting. You want to be the best? You got to work with the best, damn it. You got to try and beat the best. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're down with that. I'm sure it'll eventually lead to just Billy Gunn versus... Fucking Darby Allen, whatever. But that's not what Billy Gunn wants, and that's not what Sting wants. They want to do big boy business. 
and I'm here for it. Nice little twist here, the whole uh, segment backstage with Teen Taz and Leo Rush and Dante Martin. And they went there, and Dante Martin apparently has joined Teen Taz. I'm like, okay, you go, Dante. I don't know how much that's really going to help you, but you go. I mean, really, is it really that big of a deal? I mean, how much has Teen Taz really mattered recently? Right? Like, while Brian Cage's wife needs to shut the fuck up a little bit, she's not entirely wrong either. They really mangled Brian Cage and they really fucked him up and now he's basically nowhere to be found. But you look at the other members of Team Taz, Powerhouse Hobbs isn't getting a push. He should be powered through the card and instead he's just kind of toiling. Ricky Starks is just there when he should be a whole hell of a lot more. And of course you have the internet fucking weirdos that of all the people are marking out for fucking Taz's son Hook for whatever fucking reason. But Dante Martin coming in there in theory should be a good opportunity for him, but... I don't see where it's going to make any difference at this point. I guess that should be consistently featured. Like what, what, what benefit is he going to get from it? We'll see. But it was something interesting for him to do. Thunder Rosa beat J.D. Hater, which means that next up in this TBS title tournament, it's Thunder Rosa versus Jade Cargo, and you give me all that sexiness all fucking day long. you damn right. And that's actually a match you're going to look at and say, ooh, is... Thunder Rosa actually going to hand Jade Cargill her first loss? Or is Jade going to beat Thunder Rosa? Are they going to find a way to get Britt Baker and, and her crew involved so that way Thunder Rosa and Britt can go at, at it for the uh, women's title? Well, we shall see. Brian Danielson versus Colt Cabana. I will give credit where credit is due. Um, the pre-match hype video that Colt Cabana had posted, or that that's how I saw it anyways, that was really good. Told the backstory and the history of these two guys. Like, more of that type of stuff, please. That was really, really well done. And I like the fact that they're having one of the hometown guys in Colt Cabana take off, take on America's greatest politician, the biggest star in AEW today, Brian Danielson, this magnificent, majestic, sexy son of a bitch. Unbelievably fantastic and magnificent. And after he quickly dispatches Colt Cabana, he cut a promo on the Chicago crowd saying, it's a lot different reaction than when I debuted a damn right it is because they're the fickle ones and you're absolutely right. And they don't like when you speak truth into existence, Brian Danielson. That's their fault, not yours. You ain't got time for that shit. You got bigger fish to fry. You got that AEW World Championship that's going to look so, so good around your waist. And of course, leave it to Hangman Page. Of course, that coward. As you said, Brian Danielson, some coward shit. Chicken shit. Of course, Hangman Page wants to fight Brian Danielson after he already competed and Hangman Page is completely fresh. You folks noticing a trend? You noticing a pattern here? Brian Danielson goes out there and breaks a sweat every week to entertain you when you're not worthy of it. You don't deserve it. Hangman Page comes out does nothing, but yet you cheer for him and you encourage this type of vagrancy, you encourage this type of delinquency by him taking this coward shit type of approach to Brian Danielson. It's bullshit. He'll just have to wait his turn. Because Brian Danielson's not ready yet. He has more young talent to go through and bury before he ultimately takes his rightful place as AEW World Champion. It's coming, folks. It's coming! Brian Danielson, 2024. But I was a little surprised that this was in the second hour of the show. I would have thought they would maybe followed up CM Punk and MJF with this. And maybe they should have. Um, but by the time we got to the main event tag, I didn't care about the tag match. But my God, there was one majestic thing that happened. And it was the only thing that happened that mattered in this damn match. But God, it is magnificent. Cody gave up the weight belt. And the crowd <laughs> threw it back. I don't fucking like <laughs> They took Cody Cena's belt and threw it back. <laughs> Baby face. <laughs> when you just have to be the main event when you have no fucking reason. When you just have to be the last entrance when you absolutely don't. When you're fucking type of egomaniac that makes sure you're, that even in the AEW intro package... 
for dynamite. You have to be the first person that everybody sees on some full-on founder shit. Like, when you act like the founder, you're going to get treated like the fucking founder, you fucking Georgian piece of crap. <laughs> Make your wrist weight belt back. <laughs> I don't care if the rest of this show was shit. Sometimes you can watch something for two hours and you get one moment and that is all that matters. There were other good things on this show. That CM Punk and MJF face-off was fucking epic. That's why I kept talking about this. this is where they needed to go and they need to do it now and not later. So those that said, oh, I mind with what CM Punk is doing, now they should realize just how stupid they were. Like, you know, you don't wait. You go to this shit now. Well, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> they threw Cody's weight back. <laughs> What's my grade for this week's show with that? A plus! <laughs> Fuck Cody Rose. <laughs> Stop being a dumbass and just turn heel already, you fucking idiot. <laughs> hey, there is what felt back. 